Hola y bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. Today we are with a gentleman called Matt Beek. Hola, Matt. Hola, Gordon. Uh, Matt is here to talk about something that he's developed. Uh, Matt is big on looking at the patterns in Spanish and ways of trying to find patterns so that you can understand more easily and conjugate verbs more easily. So we are going to offer you these, um, these things that Matt's come up with. But first of all, we're going to chat with Matt in Spanish to find out how he's going on. Bueno, ¿qué tal, Matt? ¿Cómo estás? Uh, muy bien. ¿Y tú? Yo estoy súper bien. Fenomenal. Muchas gracias. Eh, Matt, a ver, ¿dónde vives? Um, vivo en um, in Inglaterra. Uh, vivo cerca de la ciudad de Birmingham. Ah, vale. Sí. ¿Y también eres de, de esa ciudad o eres de otra parte? ¿Perdón? ¿Dónde, ¿Dónde naciste? ¿Naciste cerca de Birmingham también o eres...? Sí, uh, na nací, nací uh, en Birmingham. Vale, sí, muy bien. Es que no tienes un acento de Birmingham. Ah. No tienes mucho... Pero uh, vivo en las fuerzas. Afuera, las afueras. Sí, sí. Es que yo tenía un amigo de Birmingham... Y él tenía un sí. acento muy especial de... Yes, I'm really, I'm very great. Yes, we... Hablaba así. Pero tú no hablas así. Bien. Eh, Matt, eh, ¿vives... ¿Estás casado o soltero? Uh, es, estoy casado. Casado. Muy bien. ¿Y tienes hijos? Sí. ¿Cuántos? Uh, sí, uh, tengo un, un hijo y una hija. Ah, vale, dos. ¿Y son mayores ya o cuántos años tienen? Uh, son mayores. Uh, mi hijo tiene 25 años. Uh. Mi hija tiene uh, 22 años. Vale, entonces ya. ¿Y viven con vosotros o, o ya han salido de casa? Mi, uh, mi hija uh, vive con nosotros. Uh, mi hijo... Vive en Chipre. Ah, en Chipre. Porque um, es un soldado. Soldado, vale. Sí, muy bien. Sí. Qué bien. ¿Y, ¿Y cuántos años tienes tú, Matt? Uh, tengo 41 años. 41 años. Muy bien, sí. muy bien. Y Matt, ¿cuántos años llevas estudiando español? Llevo cinco años. Uh, estudiando español. Cinco años. Sí, y te gusta, supongo, ¿no? ¿Te gusta el español? Sí, sí, me gusta, me gusta mucho. Muy bien, muy bien, muy bien. Matt, en tu opinión, ¿cuál es la parte más difícil de aprender español? Uh, para mí, uh, los ver uh, verbos. Uh -huh. y conjugar, las, conjugar, eh, conjugar los verbos. Pipiones. Sí. Vale. Entonces, con, conjugar los verbos y las preposiciones también. ¿Sí? Sí. sí. Mm. Vale. Entonces, vamos a hablar un poco en inglés y tú puedes explicarnos tu sistema. So, sí. So, Matt, a little while ago, just to give everyone a bit of background, you contacted me saying that you had developed a, a sheet that helped to find the patterns in the verb conjugation. Is that right? Sí. Yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry, in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you see, you're in the flow now. You can't, you can't be stopped. Um, so, do, would you like to explain a little bit about what the, the background of this why did you make this why did you start making these sheets what was the the what was the motivation for you uh, when i started looking at, at verbs uh, i started with uh your basics your habla uh comer vivir and they say um to conjugate the verbs in presence you take off the ar then you either add o for the yo for then as for two a for Usted, and then amos for nosotros, mm -hmm. es for vosotros, and then and for ustedes, uh -huh. which it worked at first um, throughout the 
different uh, tenses. But when you start to get into um, the verbs where they're irregular and you have to change the stem, yeah, it was too much information to try and take in at once. Right. So I thought that there's got to be an easier way that I could do it. So I first looked at what what's they got in common or, or the different verbs. And I noticed in two form, um, they always end in S. And with uh, nosotros, they always end in mos. Mm-hmm. Nosotros, they end in is. And instead is, they end in n. Apart from the preterite, where it's, it's slightly different. Yeah. But throughout all the other tenses, it, it seemed to follow that pattern. Uh-huh. Because in the verb books, you tend to have, you, pre- you learn your present first, then the imperfect, then the pressure, then the future, then the conditional. I, th- I thought, I keep crossing backwards and forwards to try and find patterns. I thought, I wonder if I could put them on a, a, a timeline system, which would make sense to have present in the middle, as we are now. Your past tenses, which will be behind, and then your future tense in front of the present, and then the conditional at the end, which it seems to make more sense. Okay, okay. Why don't we um, why don't we pull pull up one on the screen, and then you can kind of explain what you've done. Yeah, I'll I'll pull one up now. Okay. So do you want to talk us through this this sheet here? This is hablar. Yeah. So what's going on here? What have you done? You've got the present in the middle. Well, then, looking at the, the present tense, I thought it would be more easier, well, through all the tenses, actually, is to try and learn just one word within the tense. So, for example, with habla for usted, if you just take off the R, it leaves you with habla. Uh-huh. Uh, you just have to change the A to an O for the yo form. But then with the rest, if you're talking about two, you would add an S onto habla. Uh-huh. Or if you're talking about nosotros, you just add the S to the end. Vosotros just is onto the end. And then the uh, ustedes, you just add an N. Right. Okay. So I see what you've, you've done. You've, you've kind of split them into three, haven't you? The, the root, the stem, abel. And then you add, and then the extra end as well, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what have we done in the, in the past as well? I'll speak with, about the, the imperfect first. Okay. That's, that's easier. Um, obviously, you just take off the majority of the verbs, apart from a couple um, with um, say and ear. Mm-hmm. You just take the infinitive form. Take off the AR, ER, or IR. And then if it's the AR, you just add ABBA. Mm-hmm. Or if it's an ER, you'd add ear. And yep. that's your root verb. And then same again, depending on what person you're talking about, you just add the S, the MOS, the IS, and the N. So, yeah, so I see what you, you're doing here. You've got on the imperfect, you've got S mos is n, and on the present you've got S mos is n, and here S mos is n. So you, you're just you're flagging up these patterns right the way through, all of them really. Yeah. Right? There's only the the as you said the um, the preterite is just a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit different, isn't it? I mean, this is the most irregular uh, tense yeah. in Spanish. Yeah. Okay. So what else? Yeah. With the the preterite uh, two form, it's stay. But then when you want to do the, the Vosotros form, you just add in is to the end of stay. That's right. So yeah. it would be habla stay and then habla stays. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, because lots of people have problems with the pronunciation um, between the Vosotros form, the pronunciation. And I, I always say, really, it's, it's the two just with an is on the end. So you hablaste. See. Two for most people can do that one, and then you just add is on, ablastis, as yeah. you've shown, just an is, yeah? Very good, yeah? Uh-huh. 
And what else? What about this year? There's such a lot on this sheet. I'll let you, I'll let you guide. And then when in the, the Pertorate uh, Ustedes, um, you could either add run, as I've done there, or you could take the infinitive infinity form, which is abla, and then just add on. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just gives you abla run, mm-hmm. which then would help when you conjugate the subjunctive imperfect. That's right, because it would just be adding an, wouldn't it? In this case with abla, you could just um, take abla on and just take off the the on for the r endings and just add the a, so you got abla. Ablara, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the abla mos, it's in red. Because that that tells you there. Um, oh yeah, yeah. With the the vowel before the r, you need to have a tilde for the golpe. So in the red, showing that it has to have a, a tilde, yeah, an accent. And the same again with the indicative imperfect, the uh-huh. abba, ab, abamos is in red, that's for the golpe de boss as well. When we go back into the conditional tenses, yeah. not all verbs obviously follow this pattern, but the uh, majority of them do. Uh, things like... Um, Tener, abe, poder, they slightly change in the future and the conditional. But yeah. normally you would just use the infinitive verb and then just add ia for the uh, conditional and then the following s, mos, is, n, depending yeah. on the person you're referring to. Future tense, I had a little bit of a, a, a problem with that. Because as you see, it changes from E to A. Yeah. And so the way I got round it was I thought, well, I and you all make a we, um, and that uses an E, because it rhymes, and the others use an N. Okay. And, but what's, what's interesting, what I like about it is that, right, okay, you've got, with all things like tables, Sometimes I find the table's a bit overwhelming when there's a lot of information. But what I like, yeah. I like what you've done is you've kind of, because you put them into columns, you're just showing the patterns. So, you know, you could use this as a crib yeah. sheet. Unfortunately, you know, for as good as you could make a, a crib sheet, you can't cope with all of the irregular verbs. The irregular verbs just have to be kind of, you have to do work separately on them. I mean, I like the conditional. Yeah. I like the conditional as well. And even, you know, even the, the ones that are irregular, and, and I know that having looked at it, the conditional, nearly, well, all of the go-go verbs, the go verbs, tengo, pongo, salgo, uh, yeah. all of those are irregular in the conditional, just as they're irregular in the future as well. So it, you learn them for both of those. Not only the future, but the conditional do exactly the same. Yeah. For example, tendría, for the conditional rather than teneria, it's tendria and tendre. So you, you know you have to use the tendre, yeah? So it, once, you, once you know those, once you know, hang on, this is a go verb, yeah. it's gonna be weird, then you can still, this, this would still work for them because it's giving you the endings. So what I, what I thought we could do, let me uh, come back to the, there we are, back here, the wonders of modern technology. It's incredible. It's incredible. Uh, Matt, so what I, what I thought we could do is when I post this video, what I should do is I'll have the yeah. links underneath of the, the sheets that people can download. So we've got, yeah. for example, we've got the AR verb sheet. You've done an AR verb sheet. There's a yeah. blank sheet that people can use to start filling out their own for their own verbs if they want to, yeah? Yes. Yeah. And also you've added an Excel sheet, which is the original version that uh, if people yeah. want to fiddle about with it or, or whatever, yeah, or expand. You could, yeah, you can uh, adjust it on, in the, the Excel. For those who know how to use Excel, for those who don't know how to use Excel, I wouldn't recommend that you start fiddling about with it because it's happened to me and it ends up in a disaster. Excel yeah. disaster sheet. That's why I've, um, I've done the blank copy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you could, people could fill them out by hand, really, couldn't they? Yeah. Okay, Matt. Well, listen, on behalf of everyone sort of watching Lightspeed Spanish, thank you very much for the time. I understand how much time you put into that. You know, it's not 
that isn't something you've just knocked up in, in, in a day. That's taken a lot of thought and a lot of time. Question for you. Yeah. You've done a lot of work on, on uh, analyzing the patterns in conjugation. Have you found that, as in your spoken Spanish, have you found that it's helping you? Uh, yes, because um, I'm stopping to think how to create the pattern um, and where to put the um, gold painted bar. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, the more I use it, it's, it just comes second nature. Then. Um, obviously, you need to, to do that verb for a while. Yeah. I think th- there are two... Th- there are two very important steps in, in, in learning. I think one is, one is to actually get the information in by whatever yeah. means you can and by finding patterns and by finding the little tricks and everything. That's one thing. That's like a leg up, in my opinion. And then you've got to practice the hell out of it. Yeah. And it's the practicing of it. For example, you have lessons with Anna now, don't you? Yes. Um, since it started couple of years ago um, wow. when they first started uh, I think it's about two and a half years now okay excellent and how are those lessons going are they okay yeah they're, they're good totally good I really enjoy them good good yeah and it's got some very long-term students now that have been with it yeah. the beginning yeah good good for you good for you yeah so so we've got find the patterns and then practice 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 yeah. there there are uh, to me, there are three categories of, of verbs. They are the regular ones, they are the irregular ones, and then they are the irregular, irregular. They're just the weird ones. And there, there's some very strange verbs like uh, morir, um, yeah. which when you look at the subjunctive, it just blows my mind sometimes. You know, that, 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 that you've got a U popping in and popping out, and you've got caber, yeah. which is the, the coupe. Oh, goodness. So, you know, it's a bit of a minefield, but really they, they, they're not ten, they don't tend to be the, the verbs that we use most. And the great thing is that, e- that even though the irregular verbs we do use a lot of, because of the repetition and because we use them a lot, we learn them yeah. anyway. You know, yeah. most people, in, even in the first year of learning, learn the irregular tener because it's an important verb, so they know tengo. You know, so you, you learn them by default because you've got to use them all of the time. Yeah. Well, listen, Matt, that was uh, excellent. Thank you very much for doing the, the hard work on the resource and thank you even more so for, for allowing it to be shared out for those who want yeah. it. Yeah. I hope it, um, it, it can help others and just to find patterns and make it a little bit easier. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will help people. Obviously, like any verb, you just have to really study it and, and obviously look at the patterns. But Yeah. Exactly. Entonces, okay, vamos a terminar la entrevista. Eh, eh, Matt, muchísimas gracias por tu tiempo. De nada. Y, a ver, esperamos verte en el futuro con más, más información, ¿no? Sí. <risa> más patrones. Vale, entonces, hasta luego. Hasta luego. Adiós.